So in um, problem number two here, it's very much like the one that we just did. Uh, let's kind of break it down. We've got a flywheel, it rotates with an angular velocity of such and such where theta is in radians. Determine the angular acceleration when it has rotated. Okay, so our target, what we're looking for is angular acceleration. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Now in terms of our variables for rotation, that means we are looking for alpha. Okay, what's the value of alpha? It gives us this, whoops, it gives us this guy right here, an expression for the rotation, all right? Um, now, let's imagine for a second that it was like a velocity, I mean, uh, a linear situation. If it were a linear situation, okay, then what that thing would look like is it would look like V, because it's a velocity term, is equal to 0.05x squared. So that's what that would look like. And if we were going to try to find an acceleration based off of that, we would just immediately jump right into uh, A is V uh, dV dx. Okay? And then we would take derivatives. Okay? We're just going to do exactly the same thing in the rotational sense. And so we're going to have here that alpha is omega d omega d theta. All right. It all works out. So we just need to take both of those pieces. So let's get the uh, derivative component. So d omega d theta looks like I bring the 2 down. I'm going to have 0 0.01 theta. And of course, we've got omega. So when we get ready to do alpha, we just put those things together. So alpha becomes omega, which is 0 0.005 theta squared onto this guy, d omega d theta, which is 0 0.01 theta. Lump all those things together, and we're going to get here 0 0.00. Oh, 5, I hope I put enough zeros in there, theta cubed, just like that. Okay. All right, the only thing we have left to do is to kind of figure out um, what is our actual theta change. And remember, they've given it to us in revolutions, so that means that theta is actually 20 onto 2 pi, okay? So again, we see your book fascinated. It's like they just get locked on on certain numbers. Oh, 40 pi. Now everything's got to be 40 pi. Okay. Take that value for 40 pi. Cube that dude. Multiply by 0.00005. And there's your answer. All right.